This podcast contains potentially adult language, adult themes, definitely drinking, and possibly sexual context. Listener discretion is advised. Okay, welcome to Drinking with Authors, the Literary Briefs Edition. I'm your host, Erica Lance, my not as creative of a drink today, but still completely ridiculous co-host is C.R. Rice. My business and our amazing getting guest so expensive. today is Patricia Bates. Okay, we're going to talk about what we're drinking. Here we go. <laughs> I am finishing my bottle. Do you see how empty it is? Uh, Look at how fancy you are. I know, I'm so fancy in my plastic cup and my screw top off bottle of 70% organic Pacific Rim sweet. What was the name? Pacific Rim? Do not look this up. If you ruin this for me, I will be mad. Anyway, um, our sponsor today is Skunk Brother Spirits, coupon code DWNA10. Check them out. Follow them on Instagram. They have amazing drink recipes with all of their spirits, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, CR, what are you drinking today? I am doing what I thought was super simple, but have found out apparently it's not. I am doing cranberry with my Space Alien vodka, and it has a little bit of key lime juice, and I actually spice it up during the break and put some watermelon and strawberries in there. Okay, none of that is simple. Stuff. Wait. <laughs> it's it's all screw within- top. I didn't have to use a corkscrew. <laughs> But it's all within reach. So to me, that's simple. Like if I'm making a drink and I don't have to run back and forth between the bar or I don't have to like go into like our fucking designated alcohol area in the garage, like that's simple. Okay, I'm passing on that. Moving on. Patricia, what are you drinking? <laughs> um, non-alcoholic drink. It is Pepsi with uh, cherry kool Oh, really, Shirley. My very, my I very like drink. it. I like it. Okay. This is rapid fire questions. Are you prepared? I hope so. They're super quick. You get four seconds to answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, we're going to time anybody. That's like a terrible point. I'm getting Nobody. a buzzer. I'm telling you. I'm going to get one of those obnoxious ones so that like makes people jump like every single time. I'm going I'm to mute you. The entire episode is what will happen. That's what will happen. <laughs> Why? People ask me all the time if this is a scripted podcast. I'm like, what? It's that sounds like a terrible <laughs> plan. <laughs> Let me look at my script to see what it says. The next question. No, just kidding. So the first question is, what is your favorite book of all time? Oh, that would have to be The Sacket Brand by Louis L'Amour. Why? It's the first book that I learned to read. Um, it's a Western, and Louis L'Amour is a god of writing Western books. He's the only one that I've ever read that is literally the one that will I make room on my bookshelf for. I love it. I love his books. And they got made into a really, really, really good movie with Tom Selleck and I um, can't remember his name and uh, Sam Elliott. Well, there you yeah. go. Your next question's gone. Sam Elliott's recent things I'm going to ignore. I was a huge fan of Sam Elliott before that. Okay. What about your least favorite book you've ever read? A Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay, I fucking hate that book. I'm surprised you got read it all the way. I refuse to. Um, I read like the first page, maybe six sentences, and I'm like, this is fucking terrible. And everybody who's told me about it, that's a terrible fucking book. Who will never be on my podcast? E.L. James. Unless her publishing company gives me a shit ton of money, zero interest in having her on my fucking podcast. Um, okay, Doesn't come good. out with I- anything else. <laughs> terrible well she doesn't need to do anything else she's gotten 80 billion dollars from people going yeah oh my god that's so spicy that's just because it's fucking bored ass housewives that haven't been late in six months that finally got their <laughs> hands on their first ever erotica in their lives yeah oh. you said six months i think you're being really fucking generous in that i'm trying Please. to be generous mm-hmm. i'm trying to make people feel good about themselves yeah. on the inside yeah yeah that's I'm all about uplifting people there yeah, no, that was definitely um, a very, um, very unresearched book. We'll put it that way with a lot of narrative summary and a lot of repetition and it very poorly edited. It could have been cut down to a third of the length. Oh, that's an understatement. Okay, no more time to E.L. James. What is your favorite? I refuse to give that bitch any more time. 
What is your favorite book to TV show or movie? Sackett Brand to the Sacketts. Okay. Um, followed very close to um, the Shadow Riders. Okay. Both the Louis Lemoore books. Both were um, I see that. We're going all Western. What about your least favorite? Do not mention her book again because we're giving it nothing. Least favorite book to movie. She Although I think the movie made. may have improved that entire book. I'm not going to I think the so. movie improved it, but um, Twilight. <laughs> we just became best friends. <laughs> I don't think that movie made it worse than the book. I'm sorry. I, I, I the think whole concept is so fucking stupid. And the fact that she even got, you know what? You don't want to get me started. It's fine. No, we're not. Let's, let's, yeah, we're not going to get started because I have a whole opinion on that one. <laughs> we can do a separate call, podcast called the books that are dumb, even though yes. they made millions. Okay. Um, so the next question I have for you is just escape my mind, but it's going to come back. Oh, so do you listen to music when you write? I do. What kind of music do you listen to? Depends on the book that I'm writing. Um, but I will tell you right now with one that I'm writing, The Mistaken Groom, what I'm listening to is a lot of uh, CC uh, Clarence Carter, a lot of, um, uh, you know, Bell, a lot of, uh, a lot of the classic R&B stuff um some some of the classic rock in there yeah which doesn't really make a lot of sense classic rock and classic r&b for historical but it works for me <laughs> I, I believe you i just don't think that does kind of go together you can do lyrics though that's interesting because a lot of people can't listen to lyrics oh yeah no i have to have i know i've tried the classical music in the background and it's it just it no no, no. I like classical music, but not when I'm writing it. It grates. It's too distracting for me. Because I keep on fast forwarding. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay. Um, CR, go for it, my friend. All right. So if you could be any mythological creature, who would you be? Oh, that's an easy one. I would love to be a mist. A what? Mist. A mist. <laughs> Um, in mythology, there I, I did not create these characters. I just renamed them. But in in um, in some mythologies, um, death itself at one point was considered to be fog. It was fog that would roll in. So the fog would come right. in and take the take the the dead. So when we started working on the paranormal series, the the Forsaken series, I wanted I wanted something that was a little bit different that I hadn't seen before. So I did some research and um, the mists in my books are the guides to paradise. So they, they are the ones that, um, that lead the souls to paradise. They're the ones that take them up to basically to heaven, as opposed to the demons, which are, you know, the servants of the underworld. So yeah, it would totally be a mist. But I thought the mists were Valkyries. Because wasn't the mist like the whole, like, so after a battle, like the mist covers the field and the Valkyrie comes and it brings up the biggest warriors and stuff. Like, Very wasn't similar. That what the yeah, was? It, yeah, that's 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 all wrapped into that mythology. The, the it's all wrapped into the myth, that mythology. The mist carried the Valkyries in. The Valkyries were chosen warrioresses from the gods who went down to get the warriors. They didn't. The mist in my books, mist have the ability to shape shift so they okay so you want to be the miss in your book yes okay gotcha I, go. I think either sounds pretty badass not gonna lie i could yeah but the valkyries you. only existed outside of their own plane on the miss and that was yes. only after a great battle where they found a worthy warrior so like with all the bullshit going on and all the no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, and right. they were only they were and, and Valkyries <laughs> were very unique because Valkyries are the only are the only mythological species out there that have three parents. Okay. Um sometimes it takes a little extra. Right. Yeah, I'm exactly. still learning things and stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, how much do you get to read? Um, I read probably six books a month, um, if not more. And do you, I'm, I'm sure you've had this a lot. Do you get a lot of people reaching out, asking you for to read the books and, 
do their blurbs and do all that fun stuff? I have a lot. I do have a couple of people that reach out to me regularly to help to do the blurbs. Um, I also, um, I respond in some of the groups in Facebook to help with blurbs because apparently I'm a whiz at it. Um, not so much with the reading of the books. Um, I think it's because uh, when I do that, um, <laughs> With the terms of service through Amazon, it's so tricky to have another reader, another author review your books. Um, but I do do it on Goodreads. I do reach out and, and I've had authors reach out to me on Goodreads and ask me because I can I can read and review there, which is nice. Very cool. Um, what, what do you like to read? Ebook? Do you do audiobook, paperback? What's your what's your jam? I do mostly ebook because if I had if I had as many paper books as I have on my Kindle, I would not have any room in my house. <laughs> that makes sense. When you go to conferences, do you tend to buy authors books at the conferences? Yep. I do. And then, then you have paper books. And you have I a have whole hidden books. library. I do. I have a hidden library. It's, it's hidden in my closet at the moment, but I do have a hidden library. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Okay, CR, your next amazing questions. All right, if you could be any main character, but you can't change your story, who would it be? Oh, uh, ha, ha. Um, that's a tough one because there's two that spring to mind almost immediately. And I'm going to go with, I'm gonna go with Amoda. Who's that? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that is the heroine from one of my books. She is absolutely, she is just this unique, she's a very unique woman. She's there, there's a whole backstory to her that is just, yeah. Um, that would, yeah, she's just, she's just, she's, she's kick ass. She's kick -ass. Okay. Who would you want to be your sidekick? <laughs> oh. Let's see. Um, Calypso. Like from, the mythological Calypso? Or like, are you talking from like a specific book? I am, well, I'm talking about a book, but the Calypso that's in the book is based off the mythological Calypso. So it's kind of half a dozen of them, six of one and half a dozen of the other, so. Okay. Very cool. If um, so, what will make you just throw a book? Do you finish books one hundred percent, regardless? Reading. I I do try. There are I there is a handful that I have not finished. I will admit that. What will cause you to not finish a book? Um, violence to children or animals is a huge one. Um, and. Another one would be, um, I'm thinking of a particular book, I'm not going to give the name or the title, but a rape scene that was, it was, it was supposed to be a scene for a dom and sub and turned into, it was nothing but a rape scene. And that to me, it was like, no, this is not, this is not what this should be. And I didn't finish. I didn't even read half the, I didn't even read half the book. I got to that scene and I think it was the end of the first chapter and I'm like, nope, I'm done. Wow. Do you review? I do. I do. Very cool. Um, what, uh, will you leave a review regardless? I will leave a review as long as I can give it um, three stars. If it's anything lower than that, um, I will actually either try and reach out to the author if they've requested that I review their book, or I just won't leave a review because if it's one or two stars, it's usually something that. Um, in my experience with some, with some, and not with all, but with, in my experience, some authors don't want, really want to hear back about a one or two star review um, because they take it, they kind of take it personally, especially the newer authors who haven't developed that thick skin. So I try not to leave anything less than a three, which is a really good review. I mean, a three is, hey, I like the book. It was well written. Yeah, you, you check it out, right? Um, but I mean, if it's something that's super glaring, like I, I read one that was just, it was narrative summary and the first two chapters, they could have literally cut that in half and had 
one half a chapter because there was so much narrative to summary and telling that it was literally just skip it. So I think that's a really so. cool part about authors is because a lot of them that we've spoken to will say like, look, if I think it's below a three, like we're reaching out. And I don't think a lot of people realize that that's one of the things you can do is you can reach out to your authors. Like if you have something that is seriously not, you don't like the story because of what it says, but like is genuinely like grammar or like, hey, you should just put a warning on here, whatever it is. Like authors are more than welcome and more than receptive to get those messages. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think that's that's something that's overlooked a lot. Um now I'm Canadian, so I use a lot of Canadian isms and I've actually had American readers that have said, you know, I don't, this doesn't make any sense to me. What is this? And it's like, okay, well that's this, but because I'm Canadian, um, those Canadian, Canadian isms sneak in. Even when I was traditionally published, I did try to leave, keep them in there because again, if my story is set in Canada, I don't want it. I don't want an Americanism if it's set in Canada, because we don't, there's certain terms that we use certain spellings that we use that aren't used south of the border it's not a negative it's just it, that's just the way it is right so um and i try and make sure that when people pick up my books ex specifically that they know it's right in there i'm a canadian author so yeah, yeah. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get some canadianisms in there i will give you the best amount no that makes sense and I, you know it's interesting as people talk about that a little bit <laughs> Um, you know, United States versus other countries and stuff like that. But I think one of the things too, is you can say had. things in one part of the United States and it's very different than the other parts of the United States. Yeah. Meaning like I had a whole conversation with my son-in-law the other day because um, people were saying, um, do you want a Coke? And he was like, no, a Pepsi. And they're like, okay. And he's like, why did they ask me if I wanted a Coke? And I'm like, because in that part of the country, that's how they ask what soda you want. Do you want a Coke? Yeah. And it you know or a soda pop, or a soda pop you know yeah. if you're yeah. from minnesota you might want to go do you want to pop which is very That's a, we did that yeah. up north too though i got hate on so bad when we moved to the south i was like nine ten years old and i was like do you guys have pop here and the waitress was like oh aren't you adorable and i was like no like can yeah. i can i please just have it and she was just like what do you mean yeah yeah, yeah it's different parts of the country, different parts of the world. It's very difficult to figure out. And I think it does through throw readers that don't know. Yeah, it does. Agreed. It does. Yeah. I'm critiquing um, a friend of, I'm critiquing an Australian author right now, her, uh, in my critique group. And, um, yeah, we just actually had that conversation the other day when we did critiques because she said something and it's like, well, can you describe it? Is it closed door, open door? Well, <laughs> it was a fireplace, but <laughs> No, that yeah. makes sense. Okay, Chels, food question. All right. No. Yeah, food question. All right. What is your favorite weird food combination? Now you're in Canada, so there has to be something different than in America. Mm, I would say poutine. What? What is that? Oh, I love poutine. Poutine. What is that? So it's, you take French fries and then you put beef gravy on it and then you put cheese. It's Jersey fries. I know, but they, <laughs> it's, it's poutine up there. I'm telling you, that's what it's called. It's it's called poutine, and it's it is it's actually it's actually a French dish. It was actually created in Quebec, and it spreads. So yeah, we call those Jersey fries. I need something different. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> that's um, not a weird thing either. No, Jersey fries oh, are amazing. Um, hmm. Sweet bean pickles. Okay, that one I'm lost. I don't know what that is. What the hell is a sweet bean pickle? What is a sweet bean? It's a bean that you pickle like you do sweet pickles? Like a green bean? Like soybean? Like what? Like you can use green beans, you can use yellow beans, you can use purple beans. Um, you just put them in a jar with some okay. vinegar and the pickling spice, and then you can them. Um, or Harvard beets. Harvard beets is another thing that I absolutely love. And you don't know what that is. No, nope, no, okay. nope. that's okay. I know what beets well. is. That's part of the podcast. 
<laughs> uh, Harvard beets are definitely so. Uh, you've heard of pickled beets? Yeah. Okay, so Harvard beet is it's it's slightly like it's like a pickled beet only it's instead of being in vinegar it's in a um, a thicker sauce and it can be eaten hot or cold. Oh, this does not sound good. Okay, I'm passing on that. I love pickled beets, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hard pass on that activity. Totally. Okay. How about what is on your I will never do this again list? Your anti bucket list. Hmm. My anti-bucket list is pretty short. Um, cold chicken feet. I will never eat cold chicken feet again. Nope. Nah. -uh. Mm -mm. Well, so you're talking Not about some salmonella right now. No, no, no. They're, 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 no, they're they were they were actually cooked. There, it's a it's a delicacy. It's an Asian delicacy. Uh, but I won't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's like eating rubber. No, mm -mm. no, no. Nope, nope. uh, I will not eat that again ever. That's on my do not list. Oh, do not try again. I need more. <laughs> so they cook them, they let them get cold, and then you eat them. They're part of the dim sum. They're part of dim sum. So dim sum is like an oriental snacks, right? And what they do is usually, um, and I didn't realize it at the time, but when you have chicken feet, they're supposed to be warmed up. They're supposed to actually, if they're pre-cooked, you're supposed to throw them in the microwave or the oven or whatever and heat them back up. And then they're supposed to be pretty good. I don't know. Um, but uh, I would definitely say they, yeah, I did not know that they were supposed to be heated up. So I had, um, I had chicken feet that were cold and they were disgusting and it was like trying to eat leather and yeah. No, oh, that's cool. That'll be in my nightmares later. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Can we ask the positive side of this? Please? Okay. What is on your bucket list? If you could do the top thing on your bucket list right now, what is it? Top thing on my bucket list, um, I would love, I would love to take a European castle tour. Take six months and take six months and go to every single castle in Europe from Ireland, Scotland, England, France, you name it, Spain, Italy. I would love to take six months and just do a castle tour. That would be that very cool. Fun. A lot that of them are awesome. haunted, so make sure you take your uh, sage oh. with you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> little sage <laughs> necklace. That's what I said to a friend of mine. We're gonna do a, a haunted um, tour in, um, I think later this year. And I said, okay, you better make those necklaces. I've watched Practical Magic. I'm gonna need some safety if we're gonna go places. <laughs> I'm a little afraid of that. So what is a genre that you um, haven't written in, but you'd like to? Oh, um... I would love to. I would love to write something in dystopian, the dystopian genre, uh, not romance. We're talking just dystopian fiction. I would love to do that. I might do that one day. Is there any genres you're like? I'm not going anywhere near that. Mm, um. No, because I tend to. I tend to. I tend to genre bend um and use multiple genres in my writing um i haunted passion has horror elements it's got thriller elements it's got psycho uh, uh the um psychological thriller elements it's got the romantic suspense it's got the ghosties it's got all sorts of things so i tend to i tend to uh uh melt together multiple genres so i think no i think Unless I, unless I had to just do just one and then it would probably would be, it probably would be horror. I would probably stick stay away from horror. That's okay. Please do. That's my genre. I'd appreciate that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so many books written. That's fine. Very cool. Chels? Um, if you oh, found we me... didn't ask the paranormal. She writes paranormal. Did we ask the paranormal creature? question yes that was the first one eric <laughs> <laughs> i'm super pretty today okay. all right that's okay we could just we'll let it go it's no big deal it's okay i'll edit this out i don't edit anything out it's fine i love it when people say that we'll just edit this out i'm like 
Well, this is a, what a highlight. Is like, hey, podcast. we don't edit anything. Roll to six minute, whatever it is, of whatever seconds, you'll get a show. That's what I would yeah, do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Come on now. That's what that's that, that's the fun part of it. You know, we're going to record it. Let's record it and put it, leave it all, leave it all hanging out there. <laughs> yes. That's a whole way to look at it. <laughs> um, so you have writing chaos. Uh, Okay, I love this. How many fans have walked up to you and started talking about some part of your book or emailed you and you have no effing idea what they're talking about? Oh. Like, they, they're like, oh my God, Bob and blah, blah, it's so fantastic. And you're like, what? And of course you don't go, what? You go like this, yeah, no, that's, that's one of my favorites too. And then you go home and control F Bob in the book. But- <laughs> Um, I think about? the only one that ha- that I had that happen was the Vi- Vicomte's Prize. What happened? Do you tell? Share. <laughs> um, I had a fan that come up to me. I, I, I'm not sure if they read the review that was done or whether they actually read the book. I don't know, but I can tell you. They come up and they're like, I do. What are they talking about? You know, they were talking about Helen and, and her stomach, stomach here, which is a part of the dress that she was wearing, right? You know, 17th century, they have this lovely little piece that goes right along the front to keep the decolletage covered. And they're like, where was, where did it go? I mean, they, they're having sex in the woods. Where did, where did all of her, it's like, uh, it's attached to the dress, which is attached to her. And then I'm going back and I'm looking and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I see that. <laughs> she didn't get it back. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. It happens. <laughs> Things get yeah. weird in the woods. They yes. do. They really do. They really, really uh, do. I agree. Okay, CR, you got the final question since I don't even apparently know what time it is anymore. So it's fine. <laughs> All right. So. Let's say you found a million dollars in the middle of nowhere. Nobody is around. You're in the woods. What would you do with it? Oh, God. If I'm in the middle of the woods and I'm finding a million dollars, it's mine. I'm sorry. It's there. It's, it's just mine. It's mine. <laughs> Human it's, condition yeah. conquered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I need it. You know, there's no one around. I mean, who's who's going to leave a million dollars lying around? So whoever left it laying there is probably dead. So therefore, it should, you know, by by rights, you know, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. And, the, you know, that was always my understanding. My siblings used it on me all the time. So I assumed if you find something, it's yours. That's yeah. the rules. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I like those I rules. Just, I would also like to find out um somebody leaving a million dollars in the woods so if somebody's going to do that hashtag you can dm me it's fine just yeah. said dm I have on the woods show. back there just jump over the swamp no no like, no there are alligators <laughs> back there too i've lived in florida as you know still come down there i'm fine i'm in the sanctuary. woods up here <laughs> where there are not alligators or in Canada, there are not alligators in the woods. That's not a thing that happens. Okay, but like if you get a million dollars and you're trying to die anyways, like death by alligator is the most amazing thing you could possibly do. Who doesn't no, want to fight an that's alligator? No, no, death I, by alligator a million times. I'd rather have death by moose. I'm sorry. By I moose. grew up in New Hampshire. Moose is no joke. Those things don't even <laughs> care and they will maul the shit out of you. Oh my goodness. That's they just hysterical. stomp on you. They're ruthless. Okay, before this, we go into a whole How You Should Die by Animal podcast, <laughs> which is not this podcast, but feel free to send in your votes for best animal to die to. We will read them on air next time. Okay, this has been Drinking with Author. Oh, wait, shameless self-promotion. Patricia, what's your next book coming out and that people can find and where do they find you? Okay, so the next book that is coming out is Counter Strike, which is book one in my um, Agents of Star Romantic Suspense Military Romance. It will be out on the market mid April on Amazon, Kobo, Barnes and Noble, Google Play, Apple. Um, for those of you who are in Europe, it will also be available in some of the European markets as well. Um, I do have, um, I do list over there. And, uh, or you can go directly to my website and uh, sign up for a print copy. 
And I, as soon as the print is available, I will send you a print copy of it. Very, Thanks. very cool. The website is <laughs> www.patriciabates.com. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Patricia, it's been amazing having you on this podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I had a blast. This has been so much fun. Well, I'm glad you think so. We think we're funny, <laughs> but we drink a lot. So that probably taints our views slightly. So this <laughs> has delights. been Drinking with Authors, the Literary Briefs Edition. Our sponsor has been Skunk Brothers Spirits. DWA10 is the coupon code. Check them out. They have lots of yummy things to drink while listening to the podcast. Not while driving. Do it at home. This is a rule. Yes. Um, Be responsible. I've been your host, Erica Lance, my amazing co-host who is actually paying attention to most things, which is better than me, (laughs) has been C.R. Rice. And our amazing guest has been Patricia Bates. And we will see you guys next time.